seems legit. Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I am finally have had time to do the laptop case by Sophisticated Crafts. Um, this was fun. It was a bit tricky. Uh, I did the slimline version rather than the, the wider one because I like that it opens out flat. But I'll show you some features. So it has a zipper pocket here, which is just like a little one. Then it's got a magnet here at the front, which then has a slip pocket, which is the whole size. On the back, there is a full length zipper pocket. Um, and then when we open her up, we have, it lays down flat, which is one very cool thing. And then we have the section for your actual laptop. And then on the other side, we have um, some mesh zipper pocket, uh, not zipper pockets, slip pockets. Can't speak today. Um, and I also did a one and a half inch strap in case your stuff gets heavy. So that was just something that I did. But yeah, all in all, it's very cool. I like the double zippers. Um, but it will hold a very, very large laptop. So there you go. So if you want to see how to make this, and I did... Um, alterations or I did different versions of the same thing to sort of show you like multiple ways to do something uh so it is worth a look even if you just want to learn those different techniques all right guys so, so I have it all cut out thing. an interface here for the exterior I used um so I've used a woven cotton fabric and then I've put whoops there goes some scissors uh, I put my Hefty, which is a Vylene 1050F interfacing, and then I've also put on uh, some fusible fleece instead of foam. That was my choice. It does make it less padded, um, but that's what I felt like doing. So I've done that. Um, I've got all my zips pre-cut. I'm doing a one and a half inch shoulder strap because personally I like to be able to carry my laptops as a crossbody. So I have used my one and a half inch hardware because I thought that would be nice. And we are going to start with that strap. So what I did, because I'm using one and a half, you times that by four. So one and a half times four is six. So this is six inches wide and then a meter and a half long. I tucked under the raw edge and I ironed all of this. And then I ironed it in half and then, so I ironed it in half and then I opened it out and folded both sides into the center and then I ironed it all together again because I want it to stay where it's told and ironing is a good way to achieve that so I'm gonna start at this end I'm gonna go up to a more decorative stitch length of four because you don't need to overstab it I have not put interfacing in this uh, but if you're using like a, a super lightweight fabric maybe interface it with a medium woven just to give it that extra stability. It's all twisted in my lap. Uh, so I don't have any joins in this because I cut it down the width of the fabric, uh, down like the side of the fabric that I had. So there is no join, uh, but if yours isn't long enough, you can just create a join. I do that plenty of times if I want things longer. Um, and I tend to not put the join in the center either. I like the join more to one side than the other because then it won't get in the way of the strap as much. Or at least that's what I have found. So I'm just making sure that the edge is all tucked in so it's not poking out. And needle down. And I've chosen to do a dark blue because that way this bag is very neutral in colors. Um, and marble is for everyone, so this could be a girl's or a boy's laptop bag. If you wanted to make it more girly, you could put um, maybe a lighter blue stitching. And if you wanted to make it more masculine, you use black stitching. My uh, husband actually picked out this fabric. He came home with it as a gift for me, which I thought was lovely. All right, so I'm going to take my strap adjuster and thread it round. 
And because it's fabric, I'm going to do my cool little stitching. Uh, so I do like a crisscross. So I start just a little bit away from the hardware. Um, because when I go on the angle, I don't want it to get caught. So I'm going to go down diagonally. Kneel down. And then pivot. And then across. And then diagonally up. Now I would do this even if it was vinyl. Um, or you could use rivets if that's the look that you want because that could also look really cool if you did like four rivets it'd be very very cool so with the join bit side up i'm going to run it along so there's no twists and then i'm going to feed it in here now because these ones are swivel clips they swivel around so it doesn't matter but you just do want to make sure what just happened there it all just twisted did you see that i saw that the whole thing just twisted in the strap. Not cool. Right. So then you want to lay it on top of each other so that it's all flat like this. And the reason I always check is, as you just saw, it did swivel and twist on me. So I'm going to go up and down and through there. And then I'm going to grab the other end and feed it through, fold it down. And then I'm going to do the crisscross thing again. That was my tail getting caught up, but it behaved itself. So I'll just have a bit of a bird's nest I'll have to unpick in a minute. That's what happens when you don't hold the tails like you meant to. Usually it doesn't matter because I have them long enough that they don't retract in like that. So as you can see on the back now, see how there's a bit of a bird's nest here? Most of the time you can wiggle it out, to be honest. Like that. There we go. So that's the strap done, so I can put that aside. That's one piece out of my box. Next up, I am going to do the mesh pocket. Now, I've just made my own binding. It's not cut on the bias because it's a straight line. It won't matter. Um, so I just did the same thing as I did with the strap. So I ironed it in half and then folded both sides into the center. And then I'm just going to slot this on. And as you can tell, the ironing didn't stay. Pretty sure I should have put more water in my iron. So I'm just going to clip it on because it's not going to stay. Normally I would just run it and off we go. But because the folds aren't staying as beautifully as I would have hoped, I'm going to have to clip it down. Which is fine. It just takes a little bit longer. The other option would be is to hit pause on the video, get up and iron it. But if you're like me and you don't want to get up, this is the solution. Now, generally speaking, I don't really use pins at all in bag making because we don't like to stab stuff. But you could pin this if you wanted to. If you love pins, if you've come from a like garment background, you make lots of clothes for yourself and you like to start on bags, you can put um, pins through this because it's fabric. But if you've done a vinyl exterior, don't do it. It's a trap and you will wreck your vinyl. You can fix the holes. I have showed you how I try and like mend holes that shouldn't be there with a lighter, but it is fiddly and time consuming. So if you can avoid it, I highly recommend it. So this is just now going to seal up that edge like that. So now I can just top stitch. Um, so I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the inside edge. And backstitch because we always backstitch. Um, I'm probably not doing this in the order of the pattern either. I do have the pattern up if I need to reference it, but at the moment I think I'm okay. All right, so that's one side of the slip, the pockets. This is going to be the other side. So on this piece of the slip pocket, I've used a medium woven as well as the fusible fleece because this will be where the 
laptop will be sandwiched between, so I want to make sure that it's going to be padded. Even though I didn't use foam. So I could have used foam. I just didn't. So I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch. Now, because this is a straight line and a slip pocket, you can actually do any seam allowance you feel the need to do. The pattern tells you what it recommends, uh, but you can change it. If you want a shorter or longer pocket, you just adjust the seam allowance. So I'm going to flick this over. I'm going to finger press this before I continue flicking it all the way over. Pushing against here, creating that finger seam. Now, you could also iron it. But again, I don't have the iron here. So doing the finger pressing, when I now flip it like this, it should sit nicer on that crease. Now it's not perfect because again, no iron, but it does help. So I'm going to go back up to a decorative stitch length for the top stitching. And I'm just going to top stitch an eighth of an inch along here. Now, if you're doing this out of foam, Whatever the seam allowance is you're going to use, I suggest you make it that much shorter. Otherwise, this will be really, really thick because you would have folded the foam over. So that's one recommendation I do have. Because I use fusible fleece instead, I'm not worried about it being a little bit thicker there because it's not by much. But if you've used a foam, you want to cut the foam this size so that it's not in that top seam. Otherwise, it's going to be super bulky at the top. Bit. What can I get my hands on? So this is the lining. So now that we've made the two pockets, I can just, I'm going to move that. I'm going to line this up. So this is going to be pocket number one. We do still need to put some other stuff on, but I'm going to line it up and I'm going to clip it so that it doesn't shift while I'm trying to stitch around. Because if we, sh if it shifts, um, it's going to gather the pocket and we don't want that if we can help it. So I'm not going to put a lot of clips. I'm spacing them out a lot because for the most part it should be fine. But this is just to help prevent it shifting and moving while I'm sewing. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, just eight clips is all I've used. You are welcome to use more if you're worried. Like if you've used a more slippery fabric, like a waterproof canvas for example, it's more likely to slip, so you may want to use more pins. And I'm just going to baste this down. And by basting, I mean sew within the seam allowance. So I'm stitching like an eighth of an inch, like a top stitch amount. To turn corners, you'll notice I put my hand on and twist and pivot within my hand. Um, in my however many years I've been sewing bags, that is what I've found works best for me. Now, we don't want to separate this pocket because this is the laptop pocket. So don't put a, don't be tempted to like split the pocket or you won't fit it. Unless you've got a tablet, in which case, obviously different point. So, that's one side done. Let's grab that other side and our mesh pocket that we were just doing before. And we're going to lay that down. And again, this is going to stretch. So this is a slightly stretchy mesh. Um, I originally bought it for my gym bag. You can get this from Spotlight. Now this will require more clips. You can already notice I'm doing them closer together because it is likely to stretch and misbehave. And we want to avoid that if we can. So this will require more clips. Now you can use any kind of mesh. You could also use poly netting if you wanted to, uh, basketball mesh, fly veil. So sometimes if a pattern requires mesh, I will actually use the stuff you put in your windows, like a fly mesh. Uh, it's cheap. You can buy it in a really big roll and it'll last you ages. Or you can use the offcuts when you re... Oops, I just ran out of bobbin thread. You can use your offcuts when you redo your um, thing. So this video that I'm going to be doing later on actually has like fly mesh for your windows. Don't be afraid to use what you've got available. 
because Spotlight basically only has this mesh or poly netting, so you kind of have to make that choice. Now, we're going to do another bobbin. If you are on a an industrial machine, you need to make sure that you regularly um, oil the bobbin section of your machine. So I always like to do it. I don't do mine every bobbin because I sew incredibly much and that's just too much oil. But I like to do it the first bobbin of every morning. So most of the time you don't see me do it because I do it off camera. So I'm just going to wind it until it snaps off. I also make sure I've lifted this foot up so that I'm not damaging, damaging it with the feed dogs because that will happen. And then I'm just going to push this back, put a drop of oil. So I got this for like 50 cents from Spotlight. It's just a really good way to get the oil in. And then see how it's already more quiet? First bobbin of every morning. Or if you don't sew often, um, you could do it once per bag or you could do it every time you change your bobbin. It depends on how much you sew. But you don't need too much oil. It's only like two, two drops on the bobbin thing. I do have a video to show you exactly where to put that for all those that are wondering. But it just, it makes it quiet again because that's the only spot that this machine can't reach to put oil. So then, because I am lazy, I tie the old one onto the new one. So I kept the middle part of the threading in there, and then I can just pull through the old bit until we get to the knot. And so now that all that is threaded with very minimal effort, you just can't keep it in the parts that move because it knots. How do I know? I found out the hard way. And then it takes a lot of precision cutting to get it unknotted. So I don't recommend doing that. You just leave it. Um, I leave it. I cut it just after the tension wheel on this machine. Uh, you can do it wherever you like, obviously. So we're just going to take off where we left off. It's not a big deal because this is just a basting stitch to hold it together. It turns it into a single piece again instead of having multiple pieces later. We're going around and up, and I'm going to backstitch there out of habit because I can't help myself. I'm going to cut off the tails and throw them in the bin. Now, you can do this pocket however you want. I'm going to do mine in half. So I'm going to fold it and crease it and make a good crease. So I'm going to go over that a few times so that I can see it. And then I always start bottom to top. I'm going to move this so that I don't knock it. We're going to stitch and back stitch and then come up and then when you get to this top bit I'm going to back stitch and forward stitch twice because that's a tension point. That's going to cop a lot. Every time you want to go into a pocket you're going to put strain right there. So by back stitching twice it's just going to help it out from breaking because you never know how rough someone's going to be. So I always just assume they're going to be very rough and that solves that problem. So that's our insidey bits done. On to our outsidey bits, of which there are many. There's not that many. They're just big bits, that's all, because it's for the big laptop. So I'm going to start with my little front slip pocket. So we're just going to stitch that top edge. We're going to line them up. I always put the softer fabric on the bottom so that the feed dogs will help pull it through evenly. You are welcome to put clips if you need to or want to. I am back to a joining stitch length and around I go. And back stitch because we always back stitch. Trim off your tail. I'm going to take my uh, zigzag scissors. These ones are Fiskars. They are spring loaded, so they, for the most part, open themselves back up. I do need to loosen them a little bit, but they go all right. And the reason I like spring loaded scissors is uh, because I do so much sewing, your hands get sore after a while. Whereas the spring loaded scissors takes away 
half the work of scissors because usually you have to open them and close them whereas these ones will now open themselves with a bit of coaxing but again I just need to adjust the tension so we are going to fold that on that and crease it and crease it and crease it and then flip it over and top stitch it so you want to make sure that you get right on that edge and I might go up to a decorative stitch length so I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch and I'm just going to work it slowly while pulling the lining back so that it sits right on the edge because otherwise it may not want to pocket done we can pop that one aside we do still need to put um a magnet in that but we're going to do it a bit later next up we have lots of pockets so let's do our front pocket first so we need our two smaller rectangles and we need the front piece that has the smaller cut out for the zipper and we obviously need our smaller zipper which is that one i think yeah, just checking. So before we go any further, so that we don't forget, we are going to take our zipper and put it on our zipper tape. I'm using black rainbow because I thought that would look cool with gunmetal zipper pulls. I could have done rainbow zipper pulls, but I was really feeling the gunmetal today for whatever reason. Sometimes hardware just speaks to me with a bag. But it doesn't mean that it's the only option that you could have used. Silver would have worked. Rainbow would have worked. Rose gold if you wanted to do a slightly more feminine bag. Alright, so that's on. Now, we need to layer that there. I'm going to clip this in place. If I'm doing it different to the pattern, I apologise. I didn't really I didn't in-depth read it let's put it that way now I haven't interfaced my pocket pieces I tend to not ever do this um, and the reason for that is is because um, I don't want the bag too thick and too heavy so every time I interface pockets I sometimes just find it's a bit too much for me personally so I don't interface the pockets unless I know it's going to be a pocket that's going to get abused. Used and abused a lot. Um, the, the idea of this pocket is to put your phone in. So you put your phone, your tablet in the slip pocket and your laptop in the big one. Um, so I'm quite happy to not interface. That doesn't mean that you don't have to. You can do it however you like. I am not the boss of you. This is just the way I'm making it. So I'm going to start a little bit back from there, that little groove, I guess we could call it, about, oh, it's just under half an inch for me. And I'm going slowly. And then I'm going to go past the same amount. So whatever amount you chose, do that. I backstitch way too much then because I was chatting. Um, but a couple of back stitches to lock it in place is important. And so then the idea is, is this is going to go in here, but it's not going to turn yet because I didn't snip these little angles out. I'm going to snip it on the angle to just before the end of your stitching. And when I say but just before, I mean like half a stitch worth, just a little bit. So now push that down and this will fold back on a right angle. I feel like we've done this in another, oh I know what we did this in before. We do this in the free pattern for the bum bag or fanny pack. That's how I've done this before. And then that's going to go down. 
So it sits up like this. You see where we're going with that? So we're going to do the other side as well. I cut my zipper tape way too big, as you can tell, but you can just cut it down. Um, but I kind of like the fact that it's going to definitely stick into everything properly because that makes me happy. So I'm starting with the outside one, creasing that down. We're going to top stitch around all this. So we just need to make sure that it's all joining up. So I'm going to put some clips because clips are your friend. The first thing I'm going to do is just clip the exterior to where it needs to sit, right? So from the outside, we're now looking good. Then I'm going to just maneuver the lining up so that it will get caught in the top stitching. Like that. Now it doesn't matter if it's not 100% perfect because you're not really going to see it. You just want to make sure it's catching so that we're sealing off the zipper. Like that. So don't spend your whole life fussing. Mine is not by any means perfect but it is going to catch and we are going to attach the back of the pocket to it anyway. So you're not even going to notice if we're totally honest. So stitch back stitch and then I am stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric move the zipper pull out of the way so that you don't accidentally stitch it needle down pivot come up and back stitch so now, your zipper is in. And we have it on the back. Move my finger so that you can see. Now we're going to take our other pocket piece and we're going to lie that in line with the other one over the top edge of the zipper. So I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to add it the top edge of the zip with the right side against the back. Now because there's no interfacing I am using a lot of clips like that. Now you can base that on if you want to. This is one of those few times where I'm not going to. I'm just going to grab my top edge which is going to go on here and fold it down and add it into the clips. I'm going to need some more clips. One, two, three, four. So that seems like a lot of clips, but it's going to hold everything in place, so it's fine. I'm going to line it up. I'm on a joining stitch length, so I'm going to stitch and back stitch, and then I'm just going to stitch slowly. Now, when I get to the zipper pull, I want to make sure it's going to be out of my way. So I'm going to stop with my needle down, lift up the presser foot, zip past it so it's now not going to disturb my beautiful stitching. And back stitch, pull it out, trim the tails, and voila, look at that. So before I go any further, I am going to fold this up and top stitch this down and then I'll go back and address the pocket. So I want to make sure that that seam allowance is facing up so that we're going to stitch over it. It's going to help this sit flatter and it's going to look good. And it's going to take me a little bit longer because I'm going to do it in sections. You could also iron this so that it stays put. Uh, but as you can see, I'm just fine with it like that. 
Um, I also could have fussy cut that so that it matched, but I didn't because it's already a busy bag, so I don't really think it's going to be a big deal. Okay, flip it over. Now I want to stitch the pocket shut. Now some people probably would have done it first, but I am not some people. So I am just going to fold this back. Start on the edge, stitch and back stitch. And we're not stitching across the bottom because we turn all the bag pieces through these pockets. So I can also start from the other end. It doesn't really matter where I start from. I'm going to stitch, we're going to back stitch. We're going to pull this out of the way. And stitch up and over the zipper like that and so now i mean technically we can still put our hand through but we need to be able to do that so that is totally fine now we're going to grab this one and this lays over the top so that the curve perfectly allows us into our little zipper now, if you don't have a lot of this fabric, you could have used a plain, I probably would have gone with like a navy or a blue for the main, like this panel here. But that's just not who I am. I went all out. Now, I'm just going to add a couple of clips because I want to hold it in place before I do this next bit. Because now we need to mark and put in a magnet now I would like to use a rivet magnet because they look cool and I'll have a little bit of hardware sitting out here um, some people also put like a, a rivet on each side of the zipper to give it kind of a cool feel you can do that it will also help to stabilize your pocket if you're worried I won't be doing them but I will be doing a rivet magnet so I would like to get it in the center so I'm gonna fold it over and crease it now don't worry about these creases because we have to turn it all through a pocket anyway. So it's going to get lots of creases. If you're using vinyl though, you may just want to snip the bottom center and measure with a ruler. That is also entirely up to you. So right here is where I would like my magnet. I want it fairly close to the top so that I get the most use out of my pocket. But I don't want it right, right on that edge. So I'm going to put it there. Now, because it's a rivet magnet... I can just punch through all the layers. Which is one more reason why I love rivet magnets. So I'm just going to bring it in. And punch all my holes. Awesome! Alright, I'm going to set up the rivet magnet cam press everything and then I'll come back so you don't have to watch that bit. Right, so these are a three piece die set. The top one will hold your cap like that. Then I can also take this apart. So I want, with my rivet magnet, you always want the thicker part on the body of the main panel. And then the thinner one goes on this part. So this one, because it's got the divot, will hold this part. So we're going to do this bit first. So you can just place it all in and then place your fabric over it and then just squish it down. So that's one side. Take that out. Put that in. Put that on. And this part up. So the idea is, is that the presses can hold everything for you so that you're kind of more hands-free. On there and squish. Now, this side, because it's magnetic, will always pick up the bottom part. It is just how it works. Lucky us. Alright, so now... They should connect. Uh, it's also twisty. So we're still going. I'm now going to base this down because I don't want it to be moving all the time on me. It's just not good business when it moves. So I'm going to start in a corner or a curve, whatever you'd like to call it. 
and then come up to the top edge and I'm going to baste all of this. So you can judge how many clips you want to hold it in place with. It's up to you. I always find I put more on ends and corners. I don't really need this many, but since I've pulled them out, why not? Okay. So we're going to stitch, back stitch, round. And I'm doing this again at an eighth of an inch. Because I don't want to see these stitches later, I just need it to be held in place. Make sure that your pocket's out of the way. Snip. Snip. It's looking good. We're not finished with the front yet though. Because I am doing um, crossbody straps, I'm going to add anchors on the outside. So these are double the width of the hardware that I'm using. And I always tend to do these about three inches. You can do them more or less, that's up to you. Now I will be inserting these on top because I don't want to cut into the fabric and I don't really want to have to do like hidden strap connectors because I just, I'm not feeling it today. So this is a navy vinyl, this is my Galaxy. And please know I don't name them. That's what the names that they come with. Otherwise I would just call it Navy personally. Then everybody knows what's going on. Okay. So, hardware. Lord of the Rings bowl come at me. So I'm going to just thread the D-rings on. Now you can use quite small ones because it only needs to be able to get the clip of the shoulder strap onto these. And then I'm going to put it probably three quarters ish of the way up and I'm going to fold both edges down so that when I stitch it on, we've got no raw edges anywhere. If you don't want to do it this way or if you're making yours out of leather, you could just edge coat them instead. Do the same thing to this end. You just want the gap somewhere roughly-ish in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. Please know that. It's just so that we don't have raw edges. So now that that's done, I'm going to put the other one back in my hardware bowl. And I'm going to put it in accordance with my... So this, I've made it look like this because I don't want you to see all of the um, measurements because I don't give out measurements in videos. It's also not my pattern. So I'm just gonna rip off the part that has the measurements. And so now this has a D-ring placement. So if I use this in the same spot on both of the halves of the bag, I'm just gonna put a fold. Now this is, you can do this a lot of different ways. This is just one of the many ways. So I'm going to first line it up with the edge like this and then bring down the fold and then pop this under where that goes to. You can also bend it this way. Now that clip is in my way, which is why I'm not getting anywhere. And the reason we're using this is because it will then make them both the same on both sides. So, it needs to come a little bit more this way. So right there, that's where it needs to be. So, now we can go. I made that look way more harder than it's supposed to be. I need to go up to a, a longer stitch length because you don't want to over perforate your vinyl, the handles will fall off.
and then we're just going to pull that back so that I can get down. Be careful of that um, seam. Depending on what machine you're on, you may want to make these out of uh, fabric. So just make sure that you interface them so that they're strong enough to hold the handle. But I went with vinyl because I just wanted like some vinyl accents going on. That's pretty much what I wanted. And then I just did two little back stitches. And I can now trim off the tails. If you're worried that that is still not strong enough, you can do that crisscross through it as well. It's entirely your choice. But I've now got a D-ring. I'm also going to push that down so that it doesn't get in my way later because that is also a thing sometimes. And I want the zipper open again for later. But that is now almost done. We just need to do handles, which I haven't made yet. So that can go aside. Next in my pub, what have we got here? This is the other pocket. Then we'll do the handle. Oh, we could probably do the handles first, I suppose, and then completely finish one side. That does make sense. All right, handles. First thing I want to do is grab a ruler and a pen, and I'm going to measure the halfway point and rule a line because it's just oh well, that didn't even work i need to get myself some more friction pens today when i go to town i think this one's nearly out of ink which to be fair is fine i do use it a lot all right Then, because we're doing rolled handles, I'm going to put the double-sided tape on the outside edge, not the inside edge. You'll also notice that I actually ruled a line, which is something I don't normally do in my videos. But for rolled handles, I make the exception because it just makes it a bit easier. So we're going on the outer edge, outer longer edge, I'd also like to point out, not the short one. Don't worry about that. Oh, Percy just dropped something in my letterbox. That's exciting. I wonder what it'll be. We don't get physical bills. I get emails. So when I see the postie, it's usually almost always a package of some description. Right. So I'm going to fold this in and I'm just going to leave like a one eighth of an inch ish gap. Now I'm eyeballing this, I'm not measuring it, obviously, but I'm going to show you. So I'm going to push down and then I'll show you. So there's the line and I've just left a bit of a gap. And the reason for this is, is because it's going to be easier to double fold our handles a bit later. When I say a bit later, like next. Okay. So I've got this nice little gap. You can do them both at the same time if you want to. Depending on your vinyl, of course. If your vinyl doesn't want to stay down, you can do one and then the other. Other side. Okay, little gap. Then we can fold it over. And you'll, you'll notice now that it folds over much nicer. Much, much nicer. Wonder clips. We're going to need a lot. I'm putting them with approximately an inch and a half gap or thereabouts. You can obviously put more or less, but most of you want to know how I separate them. You'll find that you automatically go to the same amount. It's just how things work. It's like muscle memory. So even though it's probably not exact, if I measure that, that's one and a half there. That's just over one and a half. And that's right, just over one and a half. So... I'm not trying to do exactly one and a half. I'm just spacing them in the way that I feel is comfortable. And that's what we get to. 
Now, we need to measure up from the bottom and just do a little mark on the folded edge. Not the other edge because it doesn't matter. We're not worried about the other edge. We're just worried about the folded edge at the moment. And so I'm doing the same measurement on all parts of the handle. And that's where we're going to start and finish our first lot of top stitching. Yeah. That little bit there was a bit frazzled. I don't know if you can see that. See how it's gone a bit weird? We just chopped that off. I don't like to use weird bits of thread. Um, it could be my machine did it. It could just be a dodgy two inches in the thread. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. We just cut it off anyway. Now, where's my mark gone? I see that in oh, there. So we're going to start at the mark and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm on a decorative stitch length. So I'm going forward two, back two. I'm going to needle down and pivot across the small bottom edge. Needle down and then up. Don't go faster than you're comfortable with. There is no point. It's not a competition. Or at least I'm not making it a competition. Faster is not always better. And we all know I love to sew fast. So if I'm sewing slow, there's a very good reason for it. So again, we're going to, where's my mark? I can't even see it. That's the downside about these pens. When they dry, you can't see it anymore. Just draw it again. All right, down, forward two, back two. Needle down, pivot across the bottom. Now, we don't even see the bottom because it gets tucked into the seam. Uh, but it's easier than back stitching, tying it off and then going again. It wastes much less thread to just stitch along the bottom. That's why I'm doing it. Do, 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 do. Along the bottom. Find your mark, which is there. I'm going to put my finger there. Now, this is why I like nails. So I keep my finger there until, like, the very last second and because it's fake nails i'm not worried about stabbing through my finger okay so now we're gonna just fold it in half again and we're gonna stitch the gap so i'm just going to so the first thing i'm going to do is fold it over so it's even and then tory squish it and that's going to help it when we put clips on it so next bit, normally we Tory squish at the end, but you're going to find it's going to be much easier to get this to sit flat if you do it now. And I'm putting the clips facing the side where we've already got stitches because we're going to try and go through the same holes because it's going to look neater. We can't go through the same holes if we can't see them. All right, so we Tory squish it down. And you can be really rough with this. Like, don't hold back. It may look like I'm being quite reserved, but I am definitely attacking this. Because you want the crease. The crease is good. And this time, we use a lot more clips. So, let's do the same with this one. Over we go. Squish it. Clip it. Next one. That bit's already squished. So that was good. Down. Squish. Clip, down, 
squish clip. So the other reason I'm doing both of these at the same time is because this will now allow, like, give extra time for it to get its bend properly. See how cute little handles. They're looking fabulous. Alright, so, side where the stitch is. We're just going to look to where we need to start from the other side. And then I'm going to take off that first clip, put it under the machine, lift up my needle so that I can actually get under my machine. Now, I'm going to need to turn this on because it's navy and I can't see. Um, so, bear with me for that. I know it distorts your view, but unfortunately I need to see this bit slightly more. Um, so darker colours, because I'm trying to get in the same holes, I really need to be able to see in between all my stitching. So I'm going nice and slow, and because I'm on the same stitch length and everything's currently kind of working out fine. So I am, for the most part, getting exactly in the same holes that I made the first time around. Which, good. It's exactly what we want. It's okay if it's not lining up, though. Like, don't think your life's over because it didn't work out exactly. A, it takes practice. And B, these things happen. Don't let it stress your life out. So I'm going to show you mine. Because not all mine are the same. And not all mine made it perfectly in the hole. So, we started off... Let me turn this off so that you can see better. So we started off perfectly in the hole. It just looks like one glorious stitch. But then, see, I kind of went off tap a little bit. Went a little bit sideways. But if I didn't point that out to you, you are not going to notice. And people buying a bag from you probably can't sew to begin with. They are also not going to notice. As long as you don't tell them. And I know I just told the entire internet about that. But that doesn't lessen the bag value in any way because your stitches are next to it instead of in it. That no way lessens the price of your bag. So don't worry about it. All right, I'm going to do the other one. So I need the, this on again. And then I promise I'll turn the light off so that you can all see. So the trick for this is to really start in that first hole, do the second one, and then I'm just going to go back through that first hole to lock them in. You can hold them back if you want to. And I'm doing like two stitches, and then I'm making sure that it's all lined up. I'm really not in a hurry to try and get them as good as I can. But again, it's okay if you veer off. It is tricky to do. The only way you could do this perfect every time is if you had a guide. But I'd need a skinnier foot to be able to even use a guide for this. Alright. Done. Trim off those tails. I need to melt them down. Where is my lighter? It's over where I was playing with resin. So you always want to try and use the blue part of the flame. I did see today someone had something called a thread zapper. And I think I'm going to need one because I'm a little bit obsessed with gadgets. And I just want to see if it's going to work out as well as I think it will. So I'm just melting the ends of the thread so they're not hanging around and annoying me. But all in all, I think we did pretty well. So that second one, I got all the stitches in the same spot. But that was a fluke, I think. You can call it skill if you really want to, but I'm calling it a fluke because I actually thought I veered off at one point. It's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to come and attach a handle. This piece, where I've ripped off the rest of it because it's easy to work with and it doesn't show you the measurements. Um, so you can actually just 
put a clip where it tells you to put the handle right in the middle like that and then so that's the handle that's the way I want it so we're gonna flip it down I'm gonna line it up there and then I'm gonna put two clips not just one right so I'm gonna line this up because it's in the middle like that and then move the clip to the side and add a second one because two clips will help prevent it from shifting and I'm gonna base it down while I'm at it because you know I can so I'm back to adjoining stitch length because I want this to stay where it's told and I'm gonna start slightly off it actually and I'm gonna stitch all the way across to the other one and I'm gonna go past it because going past it makes it less likely that the stitches will fall out even though it's a basted thing it's fine so now the join will be on the inside of the back love it next side oh i am missing a piece it's just occurred to me now but whatever I forgot to cut another top bit for here. So we're going to get to that in a minute. I'll have to get up and do that. But first, let's go as far as we can. And this is what happens when I don't read the pattern pieces properly. And it was five o'clock in the morning when I was cutting this out. These things happen. There it goes. Right, zipper on. Uh, and the last two zips are for our roundy bit, but we're not up to that yet, so don't stress about it. Don't need that yet. But we do need our big pocket pieces. So again, I have not interfaced these, but you can. Don't feel that you have to do it my way just because it's what I'm doing. You do whatever makes you comfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the zip the way I want it to go. And then I'm going to flip it up to get it to attach. And you'll notice that there is a lot of extra zip hanging off each side. That is a good thing. Don't stress about that. So I'm using lots of clips because I don't want the zipper to move. I want it to be fabulous. Okay, so then I'm going to take one of the pockets face it up the right way now this is a relatively non-directional fabric so it doesn't really matter if i'm totally honest with you it's also in the pocket so it doesn't really matter either so if you're struggling to get if you don't have enough fabric just turn your fabric to the side for this lining piece nobody looks inside the bag at the wall it's the back one they see so that's just, you know, if you're running out of fabric, that is a solution for you. So again, we're going to stitch and back stitch and stitch some more. Now I'm coming up to that zipper pull. It's right there. So I'm just going to go a little bit past where I am. Not all the way to the end because we've still got more stitching to do. And then you just want to go an equal distance past. Like that. I've just had the thought now, so I'm going to just let you know. What you also could have done is in this piece, you could have put your D-ring, like, attached here. Um, so that it wasn't in the seam at all, if you wanted to. It's too late for me now. I'm already already in but it is just a thought that you could have done if you wanted to so if you're watching this video before you make it that is an alteration that you could do um and part of the reason i'm mentioning it is because you guys want to know how i alter bags i literally kind of make it up as i go along but that would have been one alteration that i could have done If you wanted to you don't actually even have to fold that up i like to have it there personally um because you're not going to see this bit anyway but if you wanted to you could just leave it down like that 
because you're going to stitch over the zipper anyway. That's entirely up to you though. I'm bringing it up. I like it in there. That's just me. So I'm just going to kind of Tory squish that down. Now again, if you've got foam in here instead of the fleece, you might be having a harder time at this. Just a thought. Don't freak out if you are having a harder time though. Actually, I might leave it down. See which way I like better. All right, so again, we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the stuff. And I'm also going to pull, I'm going to use my right hand to pull on the lining so that it's not bubbling underneath here. Because you can't really see and it doesn't really want to be my friend. bobbin thread already. It sounded a bit tinny. Alright. So then again we're gonna line this up over here. Clip it on. And it lines up with the lines of the other one so it should fit perfectly across there. Like that. I'm going to do this pocket differently to show you the two different ways, by the way. I've just clearly decided I'm doing that as of right now. So I'm clipping it on like that. Now, before I attach the top piece, mainly because I have to pause the video and go cut one, is I'm going to stitch the sides first because I can. You can literally just stitch down the sides and then attach that back up there and trim off those tails because that otherwise will poke out of that seam and then you have to deal with them later so I prefer to deal with them now. So I'm going to take off that one clip, pull the sides together and stitch. It does make it easy to stitch the sides if you do it that way, but it's not impossible. So if you forget, you do it the first way I did in the video. It's totally fine. But both options work, so just so you know. I can turn that off now. All right, I'm going to go and cut another top bit that I am missing. Uh, so I will be cutting this fabric with uh, a hefty, my hefty interfacing, as well as fusible fleece. And then I'll be right back. Hey, Scott. So, right sides together, So and, and we need to make sure that that zipper pull is down out of the way. So we're going to go like that, and like that. And then, just add it into the clips. In we go. And then we're going to stitch. So we're going to start at this end, so we're going to stitch and back stitch. And again, so there's the zipper pull, so needle down, zip it past. Oh, see, I did run out of bobbin thread. That bobbin went really, really, really quickly. Uh, this should be the last one though because there's not much more to attach after this. D-ring the handles and then the, the gusset which will finish off the bag and stitch the pocket shut. Even though there are a lot of large pattern pieces and it looks daunting, this bag is actually quite easy to achieve guys. to run my machine faster when winding a bobbin because it pushes all the oil through the machine and I'm impatient but also because of the oil because if you're constantly stitching really really slowly it won't push the oil in everywhere so always wind your bobbins fast 
is another little life advice I have for you. So, re-threaded. I'll just come back. So I'm going to go about an inch back and go over the stitches because that will now set the last and the new ones. And then trim off those tails and throw them in the bin. Move Scully so I don't knock everything. Now, we're going to fold this up and top stitch it like we did before. So I'm up to a top stitching length again. And we're going to stitch. Make sure that the zipper is out of your way. got another one so I've already done the closing of the back pocket because we did it a different way and yes they're meant to be a little bit different that is also fine so next up we need our pattern piece for our lining because we want to put on our d-ring and we also want to put on our handle so d-ring first there to there there to there so that actually folds right through there so that worked out really well otherwise that could have been a bit disastrous i didn't really think that through luckily it all worked out for me if it didn't work out i would have made this shorter so that it didn't go over the zipper um, i would have made it work So if we put it on the same position on each side, they will end up on opposite sides of the bag, which will hold the weight evenly. All right, and then back through the last few stitches. And that is now our D-ring. Now again, if you wanted to, you could put some rivets in it if you were worried about it holding, or you could put the crisscross stitching. Placement, handle placement, there to there. Right. Then we need two extra clips. So I'm going to want it like this. So you hold it the way you want it and then flip it down like so. So that in the middle and then clip it. Make sure there's no twists. In the middle, clip each side. And then I'm going to start back a little bit and just base it down. And I'm going to also flick the D-ring down so it's out of my way. Done. Love it. So that is our other piece. On to the potentially tricky bit. So we need our, what have we got left in here? What's that? Oh, we need this. I forgot about this. This is our snap piece. We are going to need that. That's part of one of the lining bits. But for the minute, we're going to do this because I've already got it out. Um, so we want our big zip. And I'm doing the slimline one, which you would have seen at the start. So I need the last of my hardware, which is the last two zips. And we're going to put one on at each end. You don't have to have a double zip around. You can just use the one zip if you wanted to. But it will be easy to use with the two because it zips all the way around. So you want it to really open up and it would be quicker to do it with two than one. But again, you, if you've only got one zip left, or you've got one really cool zip that will go with this, you can do it here. Also with these ones, you can lock this. Not that it's a huge deal, it's a laptop bag. People, if they're going to steal it, would just walk away with the whole case. But it would be easy to identify the thief um, if you did it that way. So, zips together. 
Then we're going to lining right side up, zipper right side up, outside right side down to create a zipper sandwich. Uh, this is done in a lot of bags actually. Billy 50's wallet, my new pattern that's coming out, Harridan does this. Um, so we're just going to stitch. I'm going to back stitch it in a minute, right? So just bear with me on that. So I'm now holding it out so that there's no twists and I'm going to put the lining with the zipper again. And I'm using two clips to hold it because it's easier. Now I'm going to grab the exterior and pretend like it goes all the way around and twist it up and stick it on. I mean, you can, and you're going to have this weird twist. Leave it. It is meant to be there. Don't worry about the twist because I'll show you why in a second. We had a twist because we had it wrong sides together. If I now pull on the zipper, if it doesn't get stuck on itself, there is now no twist. We've got outsides on both sides. So I'm now going to stitch all four edges because it'll be easy to use as one piece rather than two. So I'm going to go down, pivot, hold this taut. I'm not pulling it, but I'm just holding it so it's straight and tight-ish. It's taut, not tight. So we're not trying to stretch it. We're just trying to hold it so that everything sits evenly. Like that. And that, those long edges that I stitched, are within the seam allowance what it's doing is it's just holding it so it's now one bit so it'll be easier maneuver in a minute so back to this piece um so the idea of this is we're going to make a little kind of tab to hold it down if you want to um so i need some double side tape i forgot about this bit Double-sided tape. The first thing I'm going to do is fold the edges into the center, which again I probably should have ironed. So you could iron this instead of using double-sided tape if you wanted to, but I'm already here now, so it's happening. And then that way there's no raw edges, like so. And then I'm going to fold it on itself. And it's only just going to touch. I mean, you can have it really long, but that just seems too long to me. Um, you could also double fold the end up, except you'll still have that joint. So I'm going to do it in half, like this. Uh, and then it's just going to snap to the very, very end. And I'm going to have it sitting up. I'll show you in a minute. Have plans. You could also cut two of these, cut them shorter, do whatever you want really, but this is how I'm going to build this. So I'm going to top stitch around the edge. We're also going to use uh, the plastic snap tab. But if you wanted to, you could use another rivet magnet um, or you could use a metal snap tab as well, actually. So I'm going to find the center. We're going to need the centers of everything later anyway, so I may as well do it now while I'm here. So center. We're also going to want the center bottom, so I may as well do it now. I'm going to want bigger scissors than that to cut through all of that though, because it's got the fleece. Right. Actually, and we're going to want the set aside, so I may as well do that now as well. The center of everything is the easiest way to measure stuff, which is why you'll always see me do it. Excellent. So now, center to the center, that will go there like that, and then that will just press that down so I can attach it. I'm just basting it down because it doesn't really matter. Another thing you could do is a base it further down this way and tuck it under. So if you're not happy with that, I'm going to show you. So that's one way. 
let's do another way because I've just had a thought. So even though this is a raw end, I can tuck that under and stitch it further down. So like here, and then it'll reach further down and I can just do like a little cross thing like I always do and then we can still get into it. So that's another really cool way and that's going to be cute so I've decided we're doing that. More than one way to accomplish the same thing with bags. So it makes it fun. So that's two ideas on how to do it. You could also have it tucked in so it's on the inside and then it comes up and around and then that way you know whatever. Million options, let's do this one because I like it. It's something different. And it'll have less bolt where the zipper is, and I like that idea. So we're gonna stitch, we're gonna back stitch to lock in those stitches. I need to stop saying the word stitch, but anyway, we're gonna go up on an angle, we're gonna pivot across, we're gonna go across the top, angle again, but then I'm gonna go all the way around because I want to get the sides done as well because it's going to hold better like that and so now that is really stuck on there you can't see the raw edge and I am now ready for some snaps so let's go with a red I have lots of snaps I have five boxes and they're all color coordinated uh, this is the best way I have found to keep them so I keep the ends and the tops and the bottoms all separate so that it's just easy to grab um, and then they're all organized so this is obviously my my warmer colors browns reds pinks orange yellow I've got a whole one that's just blue a whole one that's just green one that's monotone so black white silver gray those kinds of things um, I just, yeah, I keep them how I keep them. But this is one very cool idea, and these are just from Bunnings. And you can also get them from, I think some Kmarts have them, and a bunch of other stuff. And the same principle is how I keep all the attachments for the cam press too. So this one comes with three pieces, but you get two tops instead of two bottoms like the magnet. I like to put them in first so that I know what's going on because again they're meant to click in for you and I'm going to also need a hole punch and another one of them so I'm just going to pull it out and then I'm going to put this away because we all know I drop things in videos and I really don't want to drop that it's not how my day is going at all now this one's currently set up as the rivet so I've got to undo this and put in the hole punch now one thing I am definitely not gonna do is make this perfectly flush and put them there because then there's no movement for when we put a laptop in you have to think about that a little bit so I'm gonna start with the end because it's obviously the easy bit and punch a hole like that then I am going to lay it down and I'm going to scooch it. So see how I've now got, I'll show you that again from the side. So it's flat and then I'm going to scooch it back so that it lifts up. So then when there's a laptop in, it's not going to pull at the sides causing tension anywhere because we don't want that either. And I'm going to hopefully mark that hole. Oh good, that worked. So then I'm going to pull this away put it on here and do another one like that so that's my holes now I am going to put this one on the outside and this is going to be my outside one so I'm going to put that in bring it under and set it like that then we're going to unscrew that. You could do this at the very end of the bag too, but while I'm here explaining it, we may as well do it now. Put the other one in 
and it's already got the, the end in. So I'm going to come from behind, stab up through there, and put it on. Now again, I could have done metal, but the plastic's kind of fun, and it's going to be less damaging to your laptop that goes in there, if it happens to be that tall. I'm putting my everythings away so that I don't lose them. I always leave that as a default for rivets and the hole punch. And then they just have to come out accordingly. But now, that clip's on there. It's got a little bit of a gap. But when you think about it and the laptop's in there, it's going to be good. It still can't fall out because of that. But it's just not going to pull at the sides, warping the shape of the bag when it's got something in it. And I find that important. But again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Alright, let's go back to our glorious zipper. Lots of clips are about to be needed, people. So, I am going to, part of the, just where the fabric is, I'm going to line up the fabric to find the centre. And I'm going to find the centre of both sides. This is important because you won't be able to do it later. It makes it much trickier. Then I am going to keep it folded there, come down like this. Where my finger ends up, because I'm pulling it taut, that is top centre. So again, two clips. Then we are going to lay this out so that clips touch clips and come out to the side. And that is side centre. See where I'm going with this? And again, with the other side, side centre. So now I've got the four points measured on that. We now need to do the side points for all the pieces. So I'm going to be using actual scissors instead of clips. So I'm folding it in half, making a very small clip. It doesn't need to be deep or big, it just needs to be visible. All right, and then this way, and then this way, that's two bits done. We're going to do them all, and then I don't have to come back to this, and I can put the scissors down. Yeah, you won't see that, that's not big enough. You don't need them too big, but you do actually need to chop off more than just the fluff. Now, you might struggle with the handle, so you might have to fold it this way instead of the other way. And then the sides. Now, we could have done this at the start, but because we layered stuff on it, it would be harder to see. So it's better to do it towards the end. That one. One more. So we can see where the centre is for that bit. We just need to do the sides because we kind of already did the center when we put in the mesh pocket. And chop. There we go. So that is all the centers. Now's the time to think about how you want your bag set up. So I want, this is the front, that is the back, and I want this on the back wall. So that's going to go with that one. So I'm going to do small zip with mesh pocket. So, centre on the centre. So I'm going to have the mesh pocket right sides up and the zipper right sides up. I am going to need a lot of clips. I'm going to space them approximately an inch apart. Uh, but not, I'm not measuring, I'm just approximating because I don't want anything to move. Then I'm just going to kind of skip the corner and come to the side centre and clip that on. And I'm not, still not going to do the corner yet. We're going to do that in a minute. Right, we're skipping the corners. Then we're going to go to top centre. You'll notice I am putting extra clips on because that will stop it from shifting. We're also going to open the zip up. 
but I want to do that after most of it's clipped down because it's easier to work with when it's still together. It's just easy to put the corners on when it's open. So that's why I'm doing all of the center points first and then we come back and unzip it properly and then do the corners because you will just find it easier. Now, if you can do the corners without having to do the zip, that is also awesome because otherwise the zip's going to end up in a corner. So if you can get away with it, definitely do that. But if not, that's okay too. And that looks too big to me. I could be wrong. All right. Another corner done. Now you hold it as a 3D object. I have a sneaking suspicion I did the wrong seam allowance when attaching the zip to the zipper base, but it's not going to be a big enough difference for it to be a problem, which is nice. Um, if you're finding that the zip is just too big and doesn't fit, undo an end and just sew a slightly bigger seam allowance. Or cut off some zip, whichever way you want to do it. But I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. So that zips on. You want to bring the bits we're not using and you can almost tuck it into the pocket if you wanted to. So then we're going to take the exterior... And we're going to whack that right sides down. And you want to make sure your zipper pocket's open. I'm just, now's really the time to open it if you didn't do it earlier when I suggested. Do it now. And then we're just going to add this into the clips. You might find that you now want to open up that zip because it's not being as obliging as it once was. And that's okay too. I've done one half open and one half close to show you the difference. So you can do it however you want. And you'll probably need, you might find you'll need more clips on the corners when adding this bit. That's fine too. If you need more clips, just use more clips. If you don't have enough clips to go the whole way around, start at the bottom, do the bottom half, and then like backstitch, make sure you backstitch. And then you can like move around and do it in sections if you don't have enough wonder clips. I have done that before when I couldn't find my clips. That was before I purchased, you know, like 200 more. I was finding that I didn't have enough, so I just sewed it in sections and that solved my problem. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. So again, I'm going to add an extra one there, there. So we're going around. You want to make sure that those teeth are not at all in where you're going to sew. Which is why on corners you tend to use more, because it'll help to keep the teeth away. And I have, I have used over half of Scully's clips doing that. Alright, so now it should be all sealed up. Now we want to make sure we're doing the smaller zipper pocket first. There is method to my madness, I promise. And then it will be a quarter inch seam allowance because that's what gap you've got on your zipper. So whenever you're doing a zipper like this, you can always know it's always quarter inch seam allowance. It will never be anything different because you can't do anything different. And then we're going to stop and clean up the clips because they're in my way and I don't like that.
So that's where those zipper pulls were just then. And that was the closed end and this is the open end. Now I can tell without even looking because it does feel slightly different. It is a little bit easier to do the open end than it is the close. Except this corner will be more difficult because that's where the zipper pull is right there. So you really want to make sure that it's not going to get stitched on. Because I have done it and I've done it recently, like in the last fortnight. And then backstitch. Then turn it over. Before you go any further, turn it over and make sure you stitched everywhere. Because you'd hate to turn it through and then realise that you missed a bit. So I'm good. I'm good. This is where my zipper tape was misbehaving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and just stitch it again from the lining side up. Because I can manoeuvre the zipper more. And I can also see I've caught one zipper tooth. I can feel it. So I'm just going to undo that before I turn it through. Right, so right there, I caught the zip because it's not moving, like the teeth aren't moving away, and I can feel it. And I can feel it, I can see it. You probably can't on camera because of the angle, but I can see where the zipper teeth are coming and going. Okay, so now we're going to go through the pocket, and I'm going to grab the opposite corner because it's always easy to do it that way. Now you've got to be gentle because of your mesh. You don't want to rip your mesh doing this. But we are now trying to turn it through the first zipper pocket. I'm pulling not too rough. Like you have to be a little bit rough to actually get it out, but I just don't want to be too rough. Alright. Turning it all out, pulling on it gently. You can even put your hand back into the pocket and push against the seams if that works better for you. I've still caught, I'll show you. I've still caught too close to this edge, even the second time I did it. So what I'm gonna do, and don't freak out, is I'm gonna cut the two stitches that I can see that are disturbing that. See that? I cut two stitches and out of pops. We're going to top stitch, so don't freak out about that. It'll be fine. Okay, that side's out. Looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold under the pocket. I'm going to stitch it shut. Then I'm going to top stitch the whole edge because that will fix my little corner problem without having to turn the bag inside out again. Then we'll do the other half. One problem at a time. Close that off. Trim your tails. Pop it in. Everywhere else was really good except that one or those two stitches that were messing up that edge. But it's okay. So. I'm going to... Start on the flat, like I always do. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, you don't have to top stitch if you don't want to, but I think it looks pretty. It's my personal preference, so I'm going to do it. But you don't have to top stitch, but that corner, you would have to turn the bag back inside out and re-stitch it. Uh, whereas this time, I can just top stitch over it and it's going to seal it. Just like that. Of course, I have to get a cigarette lighter on it still, but I'll do that in a minute. I am also going to stitch over the top of the handly parts. That's going to give us one more layer of secure-ness. Love a good top stitch. Good practice too, guys. And it just looks nice, I think.
and then get back to the start, go over a few stitches and back stitch. Done. There we go. So that's the inside and the outside of side one. Next side. So we're going to do the same thing again, except it's going to be a little bit trickier. So we're going to do the lining piece first. We're going to line up that bottom center. Now, the reason we're doing this pocket second is because the zipper pocket on this is bigger. Therefore, we can pull the bag through the bigger section. There is always method in my crazy ideas, I promise. So, we're going to skip the corner and come to this side. Put a bunch of clips on. If you wanted to, you can now do the corner because you've done the side. Another way of doing it. You do the bottom first and then clip from a side back to the corner. That is always an option. Like that. Then I'm going to go up the straight a little bit here. And then I'm just about at the corner, so I'll stop there and come to center top. And clip, and then you can clip back towards the corner. I mean, whichever way you're more comfortable with, but this is two different ways to do the same thing. There is no right or wrong way, it's whatever works for you. But finding the center will guarantee that everything is centered. Uh, that is a really good idea. I really wouldn't skip that one if I were you. So my little um, handle is going to be a problem when we're sticking on the other side. It's going to push against it. So you can already see I've started adding more clips to this top section because it's going to fight me when I've got two handles pushing against each other. But I'm also now going to zip this open because it's going to be easier with all the layers of stuff and things. So again, work towards the corner. I'm trying to do this where you can see it. More clips. Lots more clips. Do, 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 do. And final edge. So you can kind of go top to bottom or bottom to top or I'm gonna zip that open so that my zipper maneuvers the way I want it to. Uh, if you're using a not as strong thread as mine, you may want to do two layers. You could do your proper quarter inch and then go back and do a second layer, just like a couple of stitches outside of it. And that's gonna make it reinforced just depending on what thread you're using. If you're using a thread that's going to be fine, you can ignore me, but just a thought. Okay, so here's the tricky one. And the reason it's the tricky one is because of all the layers and thickness. So if you've got foam, this is going to be even more tricky than what I'm making it look like because mine's only fleece. Uh, so if you've never made one before, you may want to start with fleece because it's going to be more maneuverable. It's a word I'm just making up right now and I'm okay with it. So you almost want to fold the inner piece kind of in and around and down. So like this. So that it's out of the way of the clipping. Except the problem now is that you're going to have to now push against that. You can't really win. There is no right or wrong way. I am going to add some more clips at the top though. Because of the strain that I've now decided to put on it. So this side will be the trickiest because of all the extraness. Um, another option that you could do if you wanted to, which may work, is open your zipper pocket and take that other side 
and bring it through the zipper pocket like you've started to thread it through already because then that's giving it like a release it's like popping a pimple you've given it a space to kind of release out of so that might help you it also might not uh, it depends on how much you're struggling I guess but that is just another idea because now at least all of that excess is no longer here trying to fight me on this corner because I've, I've given it a space to kind of explode out of I'll admit, pimple analogy, probably not the best choice, but you get my point. And it is working. So I can now, this is that top section that we were struggling with like a minute ago. It's already working a whole lot easier to get the zipper in. That zipper teeth is also folding in the wrong way and I don't want it to do that so stop it lots and lots of clips wherever there's a problem area okay halfway point halfway point So this side, the second side just needs a lot more clips. And you can achieve what you're trying to. And I just add them in as I go. It doesn't have to be any kind of thing. Now this bag might be easy to make with the regular gusset instead of this one for those that are struggling. Just a thought. More clips, especially on the corner. Okay, so I know it doesn't look straight and flat and glorious, but it is on. Half the battle. And there's like a part of the bag there. So I'm going to start at the bottom because it's easier. It's the easiest part to start with. So I always like to start there. And I'll be stopping more frequently to clean up my clips since I've used, you know, an extra, extra large amount. The bottom section's done. There's a zipper pull right there. section I either forgot to clip or it's come out take your pick so I'm just going to reclip it now We've got handles here that we're fighting. We've got, got a lot going on. This is like the tricky bit. But half the bag's exploding out of the hole. So that's kind of a good thing. And if you need to pull it all the way out or pull it out more as you go, that's also fine. Second side. Again, I think I'm going to have an issue with my corner, that corner and the zipper. And I missed a bit here. So I'll show you. Right here. See how it shifted in? So I'm going to unpick from here to here to fix it. Because it's just... That corner's fighting me, apparently. Don't feel bad. It happens. We have got a lot of stuff going on really close to the zipper. So if you had the gusset, if you did the gusset option, 
you wouldn't be having all of these problems because you've got all that extra space to kind of manoeuvre. But because I've done the slimline one, it's just a bit more fiddly. That's all. It's not a big deal. I'm only unpicking the bare minimum that I have to so that I can seal that properly. And if I fold that down out of the way, I've just got to unpick these last three stitches because they're being stubborn, apparently. There we go. Right, so I'm going to come back again. Just reminded me of a Daddy Cool song. That's why I'm swaying back and forth. I'm singing in my head. All right. Lots more clips. Let's do that corner again. Something doesn't work out. You just pull it out and go again. And even if you've got vinyl, that still wouldn't have mattered for what I just did because I accidentally stitched outside of the seam allowance anyway. So you wouldn't even notice. It's fine. Okay, so then I'm going to flip it over. Double check. Here I can see I need to do just a little bit more. I was a little bit too close to the seam allowance. So while it was fine, I'll show you. It was fine, but it was just a bit too close for comfort for me. Check your corners. It's always your corners that are going to cause you grief. And now we can turn the bag through. And then check out our actual handiwork. Because it may not have gone as well as we'd hoped. We don't know yet. But this is why we did this pocket second. See how much easier it is to turn out through a bigger space. And we wanted to leave this bigger space till the end. Because trying to get all of this through that smaller pocket would have been way more fiddly. And we want to avoid fiddly where possible. Why do it if we don't have to? Alright, so I do still have an issue. I have a different issue this time. When I show you that. Where is it? The zipper tape missed. See, it says my nail. So, instead of turning it all the way through, because I'm not doing that, we are going to just unstitch that little section. Because it's, if it was a long bit, we would turn it back through. But because it's only like two stitches worth, I'm gonna un I'm gonna clip probably four stitches just so I can push it in the hole and then we'll top stitch it down. Like we did with the other problem. Most problems can be solved this way. But if you wanted to, you could definitely turn it back through. I'm just not going to. Because I don't need to. Alright, so Let's do a top stitch. I've tucked it in. So that's the main point. And I'm going to roll this out of my way so I can get it under the machine. So this is also adding to the stability of the bag, this top stitching. Oh, did you hear that? It's really quite thick there. Around the corner. away by the teeth. Move the D-ring down out of my way. Whew. We're nearly back to the start. Last corner. Needle down, give my arm a break. This arm's pushing too hard. Why 
is that not working? There we go. Whoa, I knew that was going to happen. I just snapped the needle. I heard it. That's okay. Try not to use your needles till they snap. That one wasn't that old, but I suppose now that I think about it, I've probably done too much stitching on it. So I'm going a size 18. I'm just going to put a new needle in. So that usually happens because I've pulled it and bent it or the needle was old or I was sewing over metal but I'm pretty sure I wasn't sewing over metal it's just really thick there but that's okay so I'm just gonna go back a few stitches and I'm gonna manually crank this area because I really don't feel like doing that again but see that time it was fine so it was probably just my needle and then when we get back to the start, we're gonna backstitch. Breaking a needle's not the end of the world. My main concern is it flicking me in the eyeball. Hasn't done it yet, but you know, you just never know. Alright, so I'm trimming off all the tails. And then, see there's no hole there anymore. I fixed it. Doesn't belong up there. So now I'm just going to tuck the edges in of the pocket. Now, because it's a longer pocket, you may or may not wish to um, pin it. That is entirely up to you, of course. I'm going to freehand it. It'll be fine. Move the tails back. Hold on to them so that they don't bird's nest. And then I'm just going to move the bag along with it because it is heavy compared to this piece of fabric. Trim the tails, tuck it in. You really want to push it down into those corners. You want to get the corners nice and crisp. And then, if everything's gone according to plan, you should now be able to zip around and zip it up. Ta-da! Let me move the camera up so that you can see better. That looks really cool. And then, of course, we have our adjustable strap, which goes from that side to this side, so it will evenly distribute the weight when it is full. So there you go guys, laptop case, super cute, loving the pockets, love that I got to use a rivet magnet, I'm a little bit obsessed with them, it's fine. But yeah, one bag. Alright guys, I'm gonna go, I have a dentist appointment in 25 minutes, so that worked out well. Alright guys, thank you for joining and I'll see you guys all next time, bye!